Hare Krishna. So we welcome everyone for today's discussion on Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Manual of Life. So we were uh, we started two days back our discussion on Gita Mahat on the very auspicious day of Radha Ashtami. We began our Bhagavad Gita course with the classes with Gita Mahatma given by Lord Shiva. So till now we discussed uh, first and second verse. Gita Sastra, the in the first verse of Gita Mahatma, Lord Shiva explains Gita Sastra Midam Punyam that one can become free from all the fear and anxiety, lamentation, simply by properly reading, properly understanding the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so that was the first verse. And, but, and then in second verse of Gita Mahatma, Lord Shiva explains what is the meaning of properly reading or understanding Bhagavad Gita. So he says, Gita Adhyayana Silasya Pranayama Parasicha Naiva Santi Hipapani Purva Janma Tritani Cha So what does it mean to properly read or hear or understand Bhagavad Gita? So he says, if one reads Bhagavad Gita very sincerely and with all seriousness, that also we discussed day before yesterday, that one must uh, approach Bhagavad Gita with all sincerity and with all seriousness. Then by the grace of the Supreme Lord, uh, the re reactions of his past mysteries will not act upon. He will derive the full benefit. And Lord Krishna himself uh, confirms this in Bhagavad Gita 18th chapter where he says, Ya sarva dharman paritajya mame kam saranam raja aham tuam sarva pape tu If if you surrender it to me completely, if you take shelter of me alone, alone, that is important. So, then, uh, I will relieve, relieve you from all kinds of sinful activity. Do not fear. There is no doubt about it. Krishna is taking guarantee. Just imagine. The Supreme Lord, the Supreme Controller, if he is taking guarantee, then why should we, we fear? Why should we not take complete shelter of is not a speed. If and uh, uh, this uh, uh, in this material world, if a company like Amazon they give us some uh, guarantee that replacement uh, guarantee, we we can believe and we can uh, very boldly order product and do the payment. So why can't we believe in the words of Krishna, who is the supreme authority? He is here. He has the biggest brand forever. So, there's, there should be no doubt, but it's still, there, there, there is always some kind of doubt within our heart. So, as we proceed in the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, this doubt will go away and we will be able to firmly take shelter of Krishna's Buddha Sri. So, in this verse, uh, there's two things one has to do. One has to read Bhagavad Gita very sincerely and with all seriousness. We already discussed about what does it mean to be sincere and serious. Yes, can anybody of you tell us what does it mean to approach Bhagavad Gita with sincerity and seriousness? Yes, you can answer. You can tell us. Hare Krishna. Okay. Yes, yes. So, Prabhuji, it should be like the best way to uh, read the Bhagavad Gita with sincerity and seriousness is the way it should be like um, thinking that Arjuna is asking the question to Krishna for absolute guidance and Lord yes. Krishna is answering the best way uh, any human can understand. Okay. Lord Krishna That's is there. answering the best way. But okay. for but us what, to understand. What is, you explained as far as Lord Krishna is concerned, he explained in the best way. But what, what does it mean to be sincere? Uh, from our side, what does mm -hmm. it mean? Following instructions so from authentic devotion. guru. Yes, That's certainly. Yeah. Okay. For, from a bona fide spiritual master. Yes, okay. Yes, Asta, from a text, you would like to answer something. 
process telling we should read bhagavad gita with desire to understand and to apply it in our life very nice good that means you she understood so so that is seriousness of course sincerity is, is still something else I, i'll tell again so that is serious what what asked her don't that we should uh, uh, approach bhagavad gita read bhagavad gita or hear bhagavad gita uh, with the desire to understand it and to apply it in our life not just for the sake of okay we'll get some knowledge just to show to others that yeah, i i also know bhagavad gita so the desire should be that uh, i will understand it and i will apply it in our, my life so whatever instructions will be imparted in this course that uh, we will try our best to understand it and if we, we are unable to understand we will ask the questions and if we, if we are asked the questions we will reply this is this all comes in the category of seriousness just like i many times i ask questions but not everybody is replying so, but those who are replying that means they are uh, seriously taking this course and uh, when i am asking you well, you should also reply and when you ask and uh, you should also ask in order to uh, enhance your understanding of gita so that is the meaning of seriousness and there are many people who do like this also they ask questions and when they are asked questions they reply also but uh, when it comes for application after one month, two months, when they are asked how many rounds you are chanting Hare Krishna, they say, I am not chanting anything. So that means application point is missing. So that is also a lack of seriousness. The serious student is one who uh, uh, seriously applies, uh, seriously wants to understand. He has the desire that I want to understand the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. For this purpose, he will ask questions, he will inquire. He will attentively hear. The first aspect of seriousness is that the student will very, very attentively hear the lectures. It's not just log in karde and bad way should chat. No. So let us check how many of you are serious. Yes, please raise your hand. How many of you are serious? Yes, you are. How many of you are uh, attentively hearing right now? Okay. That's all. Only seven, eight students. What about others? So many other students are also there. Rishabh, Rishabh Mishra, Riddhi Johan, Pranil, Janvi, Janvi is also here. Swarangi, Sivam, Chalashya, Prabhu, Riddhik. Riddhik Prabhu is called Diva Sivya. Wow, very nice. Welcome. Riddhik Prabhu, welcome. And Asta, Dube, Anna. All of, all of you are hearing attentively. Please let us know. Okay, at least fifty percent of the students they are hearing. So those who are hearing attentively, not just now, every day, every day if you are hearing attentively, that means you are serious students. Lord Shiva is saying, if you seriously hear, if you are serious in this course, then only you will get complete benefit, full benefit. So that is one uh, most important, the first step of being serious. In, uh, in this course, BGML course. What is that? To hear attentively the discourses on Bhagavad Gita. That is the first aspect. Then second step is that when you have started hearing attentively, you are hearing attentively, but you should also try to understand the content which is being imparted. You should also try your best to hear and then you try your best to understand. And in this process, in the second step, if you are unable to understand some concept, something, then it is your duty to ask questions, to inquire in these classes also and otherwise also. So that is, uh, that is the second step that shows the 33% seriousness is that you are attentively hearing. Next 33% seriousness will be when you are uh, trying to hear attentively with the desire to understand. Since you are putting your effort to understand the philosophy and in order to understand it, you are uh, ready to ask questions and uh, when, you, when you are asked questions, then you are ready to reply it. That is the second step. That makes 67, 66, 67% the seriousness. And then third step, uh, which is which will complete you, uh, complete this seriousness aspect is uh, that you not only hear attentively, not only you understand and clarify the subject matter very nicely by asking 
question and answers and answers. Uh, but uh, you also, when you understand something, okay, Krishna is the supreme personality of God, and I'm his eternal servant. My duty is to serve him. My duty is to chant his holy name. Then you start practicing also, applying it or in your life. Uh, you start chanting Hare Krishna Mahamandra, and gradually we will tell you what what else what what are the things you should do in your life. You what are the things you should avoid. Uh, doing in your life. So when you start doing that, uh, then it makes 100% seriousness. Uh, so in this way, that is the first aspect of seriousness. I hope you could understand. So I think Rishabh Guru has become very serious. Yes, Rishabh Guru, you have some questions? So this we uh, covered. Okay, no problem. Uh, yes, Prabhuji, no matter what, how much we try from our end, we are not able to maintain the seriousness. After a certain point of time, it comes down. Yeah, if you, so what if should you, we do for that? No, that is that is not possible at all. If you maintain all these three aspects of seriousness, uh, definitely you you will become serious always. If you hear attentively, the first step of see, being seriousness is that you you come daily. And hear attentively. That is the first step of seriousness. So if you come daily and if you hear attentively, so there, there will be no question that you will not get interest into the subject matter. Because the second step is that you will try your best to understand the philosophy. And in the course of understanding the philosophy, if you are stuck somewhere, then you will ask questions, you will clarify, you will get the answer, then you will uh, your intelligence will get nourished. So there, definitely you are going to get uh, interest, more and more interest to know more about it. So, the more you understand the philosophy, the more you will become attentive in hearing it, the more the interest you will develop, and the more you become attentive, the more you become uh, interested, the more you understand. Similarly, you will get a, automatically get inspiration for applying it in the life. And the more you apply the teaching of Bhagavad Gita in your life, uh, the more uh, practical results you will receive. And that will make you, uh, you more uh, become attentive and uh, become more serious. So there is no question. We, we will only become less interested when we uh, deviate from this first system. Not attending every day and not hearing attentively. That is the first post. That's why it is, that has been explained. Shavanam Kirtanam. If you just simply hear attentively, everything will, everything will automatically fall. There is no doubt about it. Just go and that is seriousness. Yes, anyone else has any question regarding this point? Otherwise, we'll proceed ahead. Second thing which Lord Shiva is mentioning in this verse is sincerity. So, what does sincerity mean? Yes, can anybody answer? I have already explained this in the session day before yesterday. That's why I'm asking. But, uh, uh, but uh, students were not serious. They could not hear attentively. That's why they are not able to answer. But no problem. Yes, Shyama Mandal. Hare Krishna, Guruji. Uh, we should not uh, uh, take the instructions of uh, Bhagavad Gita for our material benefits. Uh, yeah. Us way mein, uh, samajna chahiye ki hum Krishna ke prati devoted ho sake. Yes, very nice. Good. So I will add it, sir. So this was uh, okay. We should be Krishna conscious to learn when we are doing the Bhagavad Gita. That's what. Uh, yeah. Said. Yes. Very nice. Thank you. Both answers are correct. So we should not have any other ambitions to fulfill from reading or understanding Bhagavad Gita. What are those other ambitions? The ambitions are the goals or purposes for which Bhagavad Gita is meant. We should not deviate from that. Bhagavad Gita was spoken by the Supreme Lord Krishna for the purpose of making us Krishna conscious, for the purpose of making us devotees of Krishna. That is the main purpose of Bhagavad Gita, pure devotee of Krishna. So, one who follows in the footsteps of Arjuna. Uh, that is uh, the meaning of being sincerity. Sincerity means without mixing, without Vina Milavat. That is the meaning of sincerity. So, we must take Bhagavad Gita as it is. As it is means as Krishna wanted to give us as Arjuna accepted it, in the same manner we should accept it uh, and we should uh, take it. When Krishna says, I am the Supreme Lord of all that be, 
We should simply accept, yes, that is a fact. Why should we unnecessary concoct or misinterpret and say like uh, that, no, this is not Krishna, this is a Nirakara uh, within the Krishna. No, so many bogus interpretations people give. So that is not the meaning of sincerity. Sincerity means whatever Krishna explains, accept as it is, without any adulteration, without any addition, without any subtraction. Krishna says, I'm Sarvasya Prabhu, I'm the source of everything. Just accept, yes, Krishna is source of everything. Krishna says, Man mana bhamad bhag to madhya ji maam I always think of you, become my devotee, worship you. So, anyone who accepts these instructions of Krishna, as it is, that means he is sincere. But if we take Bhagavad Gita and speak all nonsense or hear whatever we like and uh, try to misinterpret and use it for our material benefit, for our for earning money, for earning name fame, uh, for promoting something else, uh, like there are a few people who wanted to promote uh, yoga. Yoga means, actually yoga is bhakti yoga. But they wanted to promote yoga asanas. Pranayam and low below. And they use Bhagavad Gita for this purpose. So Bhagavad Gita is not meant, uh, meant for promoting yoga asanas. Of course, Krishna has mentioned about uh, this yoga asanas in 6th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Krishna explains when he was explaining Ashtanga yoga system. Then he was explaining that what should be the posture of body, how one should uh, do, uh, meditating, uh, just looking at the tip of the, you no, know, one should practice yoga asanas, yam, niyam, asana, pranayam. But that is not the purpose of Bhagavad Gita. One should read completely. In the sixth chapter when Krishna started explaining Ashtanga yoga, how to perform Ashtanga yoga, Krishna explained little bit that this, these are the process. One should proceed ahead with yam, niyam, asana, pranayam, pratyaha, like this. But what the main purpose is to bring one to the platform of connecting to the Supreme Lord. And that this explanation itself was rejected by Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. That's why Krishna then proceeded to the next step and he started explaining Bhakti Yoga directly. So, but there are foolish, foolish people who misinterpret Bhagavad Gita and say the purpose of Bhagavad Gita is to teach Yoga Asana to others. That is not. This is insincerity. Another insincerity is another person. He, he was preaching. Uh, non-violence from teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita teaches us to become non-violent. And where in Bhagavad Gita Krishna is telling that non-violence? No, Krishna induced Arjuna to become violent for the purpose, for the sake of establishing. That is Bhagavad Gita. So non-violence, uh, yoga asanas, and Ayurvedic, uh, uh, and all these things, uh, uh, word of goodness. So, and uh, do good to others, be good. Work is worship and uh, so many different things. We need not to go to in so much detail. This, these are all insincerity. This, this is not going to help one to get full benefit of Bhagavad Gita. So one should be sincere. Sincere means, and this sincerity will come when we'll hear uh, from a bona fide authority, a pure devotee of Krishna. Because a pure devotee of Krishna only he knows exactly what does the purpose of Bhagavad Gita is and uh, what we are supposed to do by reading Bhagavad Gita, understanding Bhagavad Gita. So when we are, so of course this sincerity aspect is not, uh, it, it will not become an obstacle for all of you because we are very, very fortunate enough that we are being guided by uh, the purports, divine transcendental purports, explanations of Srila Prabhupada. So when we will start Bhagavad Gita, so we will be reading verse by verse, translation and purports, explanations of Srila Prabhupada. So, there will be very less chances or no chances that will get deviated from this aspect. But of course, we should know. Because there, there will be many people who will tell you so many things. Then you, you should be knowing that what is the purpose of Bhagavad Gita so that you can tell them and you can defeat their uh, this insincere logics. So, these two things, sincerity and uh, seriousness, if one follows, then by the grace of the Lord, the reactions of his past misdeeds will not act. Then he will be, become immune from the reactions of past misdeeds. So what does it mean that uh, the reactions of past misdeeds will not act upon him? That means, although the difficulty may come, although the reactions may come, may appear, it may appear that uh, uh, on, uh, on the body or mind, these reactions may come, but it will not affect his Krishna consciousness. Even pure devotees, they also get sick. They also uh, sometimes stuck up some uh, material problems. 
uh, challenges they also face. It's not that the devotees in this material world, they, they become uh, completely free from all the problems. But the main point is what Lord Shiva is telling here, that in spite of all the problems uh, which may come in the body of the uh, body of a devotee, such a devotee, he will not be deviated. He will not become disturbed. He will still be fixed up in the service of Krishna. He will still uh, be jubilant within his heart because of being uh, situated in pure consciousness. So that is the meaning of the, the sinful reactions. Past sinful reactions will not act upon. Although it will come, but he will become immune from all this. this it, it's just like a, uh, uh, there is a, a great rain rainfall is there. So uh, you go, uh, a person is going without raincoat and a, a person is going with raincoat. So with raincoat means devotee. A devotee who is sincerely and seriously taking shelter of teachings of Bhagavad Gita is having raincoat. So although the rainfall is there uh, and it, the rain is falling on him also, but he still he will not get wet. Uh, he'll be saved from rainfall. So that is the meaning. Okay. So because difficulties will keep coming. We cannot stop. We are in this material world. Uh, so it has to be there. These difficulties will be there. Yes. So this we discuss. This is Gita Mahatma second verse. So now next verse is Gita Mahatma third. We'll just recite the verse and uh, quickly just read the translation. Next class, tomorrow we'll discuss in more detail. This is also one of the very important words. So Lord Shiva in this verse says, Malla niramo chanam pum sam jalasnanam dine dine sakrit gita amrita asnanam samsara malanasanam One may cleanse himself daily by taking a bath in the water. But if one takes a bath even once in the sacred Ganga water of Bhagavad Gita, for him the dirt of material life is altogether vanquished. This is Gita Mahatma, third verse. So in this verse, Lord Shiva is telling that one may, uh, by daily, the daily taking bath, we can clean our body externally. <laughs> but again, uh, next day we again have to take bath. But even once <clears throat> one takes bath of sacred nectar, <coughs> sacred Ganga water of Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> then, uh, the dirt of material life is altogether finished. No more dirt. So, we'll discuss it tomorrow. So, there is a question for you. You will have to think and next, uh, just, uh, uh, tomorrow, you, when you come, I'll ask uh, so, what does it mean to take a bath in the sacred Ganga water of Bhagavad Gita? This is the first question. Who takes bath? Is this body, mind, intelligence or soul? What does it mean to take bath in the sacred Ganga water of Bhagavad Gita? This is the first question. And the second question is, uh, the dirt of material life is altogether vanquished. So, so, what is this dirt of material life and where it is situated? In the body? Mind, intelligence, soul, where it is situated. So you have to answer okay. these two questions and we'll discuss about it tomorrow. tomorrow. I have an answer now. It is. <laughs> yes. Help me, So the yes, answer is. I have is uh, that. Okay, yes. Listening yes, to the yes, Bhagavad Gita is like. Uh, all the past deeds, not only not affecting. But also becoming, you know, ending the balance sheet. Yes, okay. Very nice. Think more about it. So, and in the yeah. more detail you have to tell. What does the dirt okay. means and what does that mean? What does it mean to take bath in the sacred water of God? Okay. Is there any question? Anyone is having any question from today? The question today's is, session? is also related, Prabhuji. So do the things not affect us after reading the Gita or listening to the Gita? If you or... have properly read, properly understood, the things will not affect okay. you. But does the account get loosed for that? Yes. Oh. Account okay. is also okay. completely finished. Only remnants wow. are remaining. It's just like yes. uh, the uh, fan is running with the fire, the fire is the speed. As soon as you switch off the fan, 
So the mm -hmm. electric electric connection is immediately disconnected. There's no electricity. But uh, because the fan was moving, so because of inertia, it will keep moving for some time. Similarly, a devotee who has completely understood the philosophy, who has completely taken shelter of Krishna philosophy, is uh, this uh, uh, his material existence existence is already terminated. Only the inertia wow. is remaining. This material body, mm -hmm. as long as this part of the material body is there within this body, uh -huh. so this for this one life, he will just keep going in his Krishna constant activity. And as soon as he leaves his body, he is going to get a spiritual world. And Prabhuji, in inertia, mein toh, uh, viscosity or friction is increasing. Okay. <laughs> so for a short time, though. <laughs> Hare yeah. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, any other question? Yes, Ganesh Prabhu. प्रभुजी आज आपने भक्ति योग के बारे में बोला था तो हम लोग जब चांटिंग करते हैं हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा तभी चांटिंग के वक्त भी ये भक्ति योगा से ही करना चाहिए या फिर कुछ अलग तरीके थोड़ा सा चांटिंग व्हेन वी चांट हरे कृष्णा इट शुड बी डन इन द मूड ऑफ भक्ति डिवोशन सो कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस इज अ प्रोसेस कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस is required even when we are chanting Hare Krishna. If somebody is chanting uh, Hare Krishna with uh, with the conception of Jnana, Jnana Marga, Jnana or Dhyan or Mayavad conception, uh, that conception also chanting of Hare Krishna will not be uh, fully beneficial to him. Because Hare Krishna Mantra is like touch stone, a desire, Kalpataru. Uh, whatever one desires, he will get. If you desire material things, you will get material things and you will stop in this material world. And a Mayavadi, if he chants Hare Krishna, he will, he will merge in the Supreme Lord. But a devotee who has the consciousness that I am eternal servant of Krishna, I want to just engage in the service of Krishna. And with this attitude, he chants Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So he gets the center of Krishna's Buddha spirit. The love for Krishna is awakened within us. For that, uh, to create that consciousness only, uh, we need, uh, we must uh, actually uh, very attentively hear Bhagavad Gita and understand its philosophy, then only we'll be able to develop develop the pure Krishna consciousness. And with that pure Krishna consciousness, when we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra, uh, that is known as Sudhana, pure name. And then that will bring us uh, closer to Krishna's Lord of Spirit. Yes, uh, Aditi. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandar Pedam. Prabhuji, we all know that uh, for understanding the Krishna consciousness and develop the uh, love for Radha Krishna, the source is Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. So Prabhuji, my question is ki, who is a Guru and a Sadhu and which Shastra is required to get the love? Uh, guru, is get the... Uh, guru is a bona fide authority. Guru is a bona fide authority who is coming in disciplic succession and who himself is practicing the philosophy of Bhakti Yoga. And who teaches us to practice the same thing. And sadhus are uh, those devotees who are also practicing the same Krishna consciousness philosophy uh, and uh, they give us the association. The sadhus are the, the devotee association. Guru is the personality who guides us, who instructs us on the path towards uh, Krishna, Krishna consciousness. And sastras are the authorized scriptures revealed scriptures uh, given by the Supreme Lord or the bona fide authority, Mahajan, a pure devotee, uh, who uh, on the basis of the scriptures given by the Supreme Lord, she gives the scriptures like the Kirsam is also accepted as Sastra, which are, which are, they, is Bhakti Sambhishin to another Shaitan Shaitan. These are based on the scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam and other Puranas given by, originally given by Ved Vyasa. This is Guru Sadhu Shastra. So whatever we practice, it should be confirmed from these three. Guru Sadhu Shastra. Shastras are the basic foundation and Guru explains us uh, the philosophy from the Shastra and we practice this Krishna consciousness among Sadhus in the association of Sadhu, in the association of devotees. Prabhuji, I'm sorry, uh, who is a Sadhu? Sadhu is a person who practices uh, the teachings of Sastra. The exact, uh, the literal meaning of sadhu is achha. 
sadhu sadhu means good right so one whose behavior is good he is known as sadhu but actual sadhu is one uh, who follows the teachings of bhagavad gita properly he is actual sadhu right. Thank you. Then we'll come to see. Yes. yes.